Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to play Jolene, um, originally by Dolly Parton. Um, yeah, not gonna lie, I bought her greatest hits album the other day and it was easily one of the best albums I've bought in a while. No shame. Much love to Dolly, loving it. Anyway, okay, so um, I'm just quickly going to show you what it's going to sound like today. Your beauty is being compared to flaming lights all in So yeah, sorry, big boasts, I bought the album. Um, I don't know the words the whole way through, but that's cool, um, at least I can learn them. Anyway, so what you can do, if you want to play along with the CD, you're going to need a capo on four. I'm not going to be playing along with the CD, so I'm going to have a capo on two. And that's how I'm going to teach it today. Um, but like I said, play along with the CD, capo on four. You are going to need four chords today, A minor, G, C, and E minor. So if you know how to play those chords, skip ahead, and if you don't, keep watching. So high E string, string one, low E string, string six. Okay, so A minor, you're going to put your first finger on the second string, first fret, your middle finger on the fourth string, second fret, and your ring finger on the third string, second fret. So this is A minor. So to get from A minor to C, all you're going to do is you're going to move your ring finger to the fifth string, third fret. So we have an A minor and a C, voila. Okay, so G, you're going to put your first finger on the fifth string, second fret, your middle finger on the sixth string, third fret, and then your ring finger and your little finger on the first and second strings of the third fret. So that's a G. So E minor, last chord now, you're going to put your middle finger on the fifth string, second fret, and your ring finger, sorry, and your second finger, your Hang on, no. You're going to put your first finger on the fifth string, second fret, and your middle finger on the fourth string, second fret. So, yes, you want to check out the boxes around my head, hopefully, they'll be right. Okay, so there are two chord patterns for the song um, and two strumming patterns, but it's cool. Um, yeah, they kind of change a little bit, but I'll explain when that happens. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all, the song starts with the chorus, um, so that's just the Jolene, Jolene, Jolene bit. So the chorus has got two chord patterns in. So the first chord pattern, you've got an A minor, a C, a G, then an A minor, a G, and another A minor. So that seems simple enough. Where this gets a tad confusing though is how long you hold each of these beats for. And, um, sorry, is how long you hold each of those chords for and therefore which strumming pattern you do. So first of all, I'll just go all the way through it, check out the boxes around my head, they'll be right. So you hold the first A minor for two beats, then you have the C for two beats, then the G for two beats, then you have the A minor for four beats, the G for four beats, and then the last A minor for eight beats. So what you are going to do, strumming pattern-wise, every chord that you hold for two beats, all you're going to do on it is just three down strums and a down up. So for example, the first three chords, um, so you've got the A minor, you've got down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. So just down, 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 up, down, 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 up. So that is on all the chords you hold for two beats. Everything else you hold for either four or eight beats, the starting pattern you're going to do is going to sound like this. So all that is, um, it's exactly the same strumming pattern each time, um, except on the last one I was just kind of lifting my fingers to kind of meet the strings. But once again, I will explain all of this, do not fret. Okay, so the strumming pattern for every for all the chords you hold for four and for eight beats. You've got three down strums, down up. So exactly like what you're playing on all the chords you hold for two beats. Then the second bit is up, down, 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 up. Up, down, 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 up. Up, down, 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 up. So that whole strumming pattern mushed together. Down, 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 up. Up, down, 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 up. So I'm going to play that very, very slowly now on an A minor. Down, 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 up. Up, down, 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 up. Okay? And so um, that strumming pattern lasts for four beats. So the A minor you play, you and the G, you both hold for four beats. So you play that once. And then the last A minor you play, you hold for eight beats. So you play the strumming pattern twice. And what I was doing when I was like, 
that last time I was playing that string pattern exactly, I was just kind of just uh, lightly raising my fingers off of the strings just to mute it, but that's kind of just something more you can add down the line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the strumming pattern now for the first half of the chorus, because that's the only bit that I've taught you, then I'll, te then I'll teach you the chord pattern for the next bit. <laughs> So you've got an A minor for two beats, a C for two beats, a G for two beats, an A minor for four, a G for four, an A minor for eight. Now I'll show you with the strumming pattern. Cool. Okay, so that's the first bit of the chorus. The second bit of the chorus, um, to be honest, basically, it's kind of exactly the same as the first bit, except, I should explain. So, um, you've got an A minor for two beats, a C for two beats, a G for two beats, an A minor for four beats, now this is where it changes. You've then got a G for two beats, an E minor for two beats, and then an A minor for eight beats. So it's basically exactly the same as the first half, except instead of holding the G for four beats, you only hold it for two beats, and then there's a little A minor that just kind of sneaks its way in for two beats. Um, and yeah, and then you've just got to think a bit more about the strumming pattern. So what I'm going to do, I'm just quickly going to sing that through with you. Um, yeah, bear in mind, singing ain't my thing. And I, fi I still find it quite high, but you know, whatever. Um, the point is the guitar, not my voice, as we shall see. Mm -hmm. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. So I'll do, do the full eight beats on the end of that chorus. So that is the chorus. So not gonna lie, that's basically kind of all the hard work done. So then um, you get onto the verse, and the verse is a bit that goes, your beauty is beyond, beyond compare, and all of those sorts of things that don't have Jolene, 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 and that is all this chord pattern. So what that is, um, it basically, everything is held, all these chords are now held for two beats, apart from the last A minor, which is held, you probably guessed it, for eight beats. So, um, yeah, basically, this chord pattern is kind of the same as the last bit of the chorus, kind of, but it's different. So you've got an A minor for two beats, a C for two beats, a G for two beats, an A minor for two beats, a G for two beats, an E minor for two beats, and then an A minor for eight beats. So in the verse, everything is for two beats, apart from the, eight, the last A minor, which is for eight beats. So this is slightly different to the second half of the chorus, where you've got that random A minor in the middle, which is held for four beats. But details, details, we're gonna, just gonna forget about that bit. So for the um, verse, that's gonna sound like with the strumming patterns. Remember, so everything is two beats, so the strumming pattern is just gonna be down, 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 up. So that is gonna sound like, your beauty is real compared with flame and wax and all in hair And every skin and eyes of ever green Your smile is like a breath of spring Your voice is soft like summer rain I cannot compete with you, Jolene And then it goes on again, he talks about you in his sleep, blah de blah de blah Um, so yeah, like I said, this song is a lot more You look at it on paper and you're like, oh my god, that's so easy, I have this down but it's kind of not, because there's kind of random bits here and there that you don't really expect. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's all good. Um, there's a, if you click on, I'll put the link down below, there's a good tab on all Twitter about this. So yeah, um, please comment, please rate, please subscribe, please request. Sorry, a lot of talking, but um, yeah, that's personally how I learn best. I learn best by people talking and then kind of watching, but obviously people are completely different, some are kinesthetic, learners, all these different kinds, it's all good. Um, cool, so yeah, my lesson for the day. Um, my lesson today, if I'm honest, it's not really exciting, I can't really think of anything else. Um, oh yeah, so my lesson for the day is if you are, say, for example, sitting a UK CAT um, like exam, which is a kind of like an assessment you do before you apply to certain medical schools, one of the sections is called abstract reasoning. Um, and these also appear in like other kind of psychometric tests. So abstract reasoning is where you have um, two boxes of shapes and then kind of there'll be one rule for one box of shapes and then the other box will have maybe like a slightly different version of that rule so for example all the shop all the shapes in box a may have an even number of sides and all the shapes in box b may have an odd number of sides and then you're going to get given an example shape and you have to say whether it will fit into shape a or shape b or just none of them and so yeah you kind of have like 30 seconds to look at these kind of 
look at these two boxes, find out what the rule is, and then like another 30 seconds to fit five example shapes. So I have to say, using that example of um, one has even sides, one has odd sides, that is simplifying it very greatly. Sometimes the rules are that simple, but um, sometimes they're really not. Anyway, so um, I was going to say, so the first thing you do if you ever encounter anything like that is you find the box which has kind of like the simplest well, just like the simplest shape in. So say if one box only has like two shapes in, then you're like, oh cool, I'm gonna look at these two shapes and find out what the pattern is. Um, it's a lot easier to, to explain if it is in front of you, but I hope for your sakes you never ever have to do abstract reasoning because personally, my brain just does not work that way. I do not understand abstract reasoning. So I have a lot of work to do. So yeah, um, good luck to anybody else doing the UK cat. Um, yeah, I feel your pain so bad. Um, but yeah, have a nice life YouTube. Please comment, please rate, please subscribe and please request.